All right, so we are live. Welcome, 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 everyone. So today, I've been given the keys to the kingdom. So we're going to build an entire world. This is going to be a lot of fun. So one of the things that I want to talk about today uh, is kind of what we ended on last week, actually. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and move a little further into this Hour of Code project. Um, we're not going to do anything that's actually in the activities. We're actually going to dive a little bit farther. So we're also going to talk about actually getting our character to fly. You can see that we've had this flying character up here, but I haven't showed you how to actually make that happen. So we're going to play a little bit with the code there. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about is uh, doing some stuff that we were actually requested to do. So putting some text on screen. So we're going to make our way through all of those pieces as we go today. So first of all, if we come down here, you can actually see that this, <laughs> as it would turn out, <laughs> luck would have it. As soon as I actually ended the last stream, um, we ended up having the game actually complete. <laughs> so here's what it actually looks like. So when you actually package the game up, you'll get a little uh, window down here or a little uh, window. Aha, this guy right here. So there's Windows No Editor. This is the folder that Unreal will actually make when you actually, whoop, let me show my screen. Sorry about that, y'all. Just realized I didn't have that up. There we go. This one right here. So this Windows No Editor, this guy right here. So when you actually package the game, um, this will pop up and now you can actually play the game. So let's go ahead and open this up and have a look at it. So inside of here, you'll find another EXE and you'll notice this is Unreal Engine Hour of Code EXE. This is the actual game that you created, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and open this up. And inside of here, da -da -da -da, wait for it. We have everything that was working as we would expect it to when we were playing it last. So this is really fun. This is the actual game you can send off to your friends, your family. Notice that sometimes your uh, designer forgets to lift the coins out of the actual ground here. Uh, but everything in here works as we would expect. I should be able to come over here, do the checkpoint. If I hop off the edge, I should then poof, and I should be right here again. Ooh, okay. I should end up resetting from there too. Perfect. Just play through here. Out of face, Iger. Good to see you, gentlemen. And we'll go over here and get a gem. I'll hop up over here. Grab that checkpoint just in case. Here, I'm going to go get the key so that we can actually get through the door over there in the far end. All of our UI is working. You can notice that the coins go up as I pick them up. I'll be able to come over here and open this one. Uh, not a face asking a question. Do you actually need the Unreal to play it? And the answer is no, you do not. It is an EXE that you can just drop on somebody else's machine and make it work. See how fast I did. Hey, speed run, a minute 12 out of minute 20. So yeah. And then I can just hit escape and it'll actually quit the game out because we set up the code to do that too. So then we're back out here. So this is cool, but we can also kind of dive a little bit farther in there and we're going to kind of do that next. So before we jump in, um, this is where we actually ran through. So this website here, let me go ahead and grab this for you, drop it in the chat. So if you go to this website, this actually gives you all of the information you need to build what I just ran through. Um, there were five hours worth of code. There's a lot of really good information in there. Um, if you click on any of these little areas where the text is blue, it will take you to the actual student guide. If you're an instructor, you can actually run through the teacher guide. It's a little bit different. Uh, the teacher guide's got a little bit of extra information in there like, oh, by the way, at such and such a time during the lesson, you may want to talk about this or let's actually you know, break out into groups and we'll actually do these little activities to make these things happen. Um, this has been really successful. I've actually seen a few uh, videos on YouTube of students actually building some of this stuff. Uh, we had some students actually like make themselves a whole lot smaller so they could get into tiny little places. Uh, we had a couple people drop in some AI. That was really cool to kind of see. Um, did a little bit of adding their own text in the world as well. Uh, people actually talking over the information that was actually being shown on screen. Like it was, it's really exciting to see this stuff grow and become a bigger thing. It's been way, way cool. So I appreciate that. Keep sending those, those things, you know, uh, at clever, like on Twitter, let us know what's actually happening on there. All right. So there's those guys and that one. So da -da, da -da. okay. So this is the world that we had built. So I'm going to zoom up here. So this is the entire playground that we've had. Now, this is just one 
small example of what you can actually create. There are all kinds of cool things that you can actually build. So we're going to go ahead and build a world in here. Um, actually, you know what? Quick tangent. Let's do uh, let's do a little bit of widget work because I want to talk about that because it was a request that was thrown in there. So the idea, let's go ahead and set this to play at player default. And we're going to say play. This will send me back down here. So the thing I want to talk about is... Oops, wrong button, that one right here. So down here in the corner, we have this UI. Now this UI is being shown up on screen as soon as the game begins and through the actual game mode. So that's what's gonna be super important. We have to understand that this is being thrown in through the game mode. So what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and hit escape. Let's go ahead and open up the game mode and take a look and see what's actually going on. So down here in the third person blueprint, if we open up our blueprints inside of here, we have this third person game mode. I'll zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier to see. So this, we're gonna go ahead and double click on this. And inside here, hey, that's perfect, display HUD. So we want this part right here. This is exactly what we're looking for. So let's take a quick look and see what's actually going on. So when the game actually starts, we're doing a couple of different things. So the sequencer, uh, the second thing that we're doing is we're actually showing up this widget on screen. Now this widget is that thing I was just circling just a second ago. So that, is then added to the viewport. Uh, this is just a set reference. Um, I'm using this later in the code. We can pretty much ignore this for right now, so don't worry about it too much. So what we want to do is we want to create a widget and then we want to put it on screen. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's make a widget, put it on screen. So over here inside of our HOC world, we're going to come over into the hour of code. Can keep things nice and clean. And we're going to open up the widgets. So inside of here, we can just right click and we need to go into the UI. Ooh, it's been a while since I've been in here. Where are you at, little machine? User interface, down here at the bottom, there we go. And then we're gonna say widget blueprint. All right, and we're gonna call this one widget, and we're gonna call this one uh, team name, because this is the request. It's like, oh, we have teams working on this. How do we put the team name on there? So we're just gonna open this one up, and we'll get this little interface. So as talked about in the previous lesson, uh, there are a bunch of pieces that actually are inside of here. I'm gonna kind of gloss over those for the moment and you can just kind of follow along and you'll get exactly what you're looking for. So over here on the far left, we have the text inside of our palette. So we're just gonna grab said text and we're just going to drag it onto the screen. Now there's something that's kind of important to understand and that is this right here. This is an anchor point. So this, is referencing the top left-hand corner of any screen that you happen to be looking at. Um, not a face, is this all free? Yes, this is all free. <laughs> the Unreal Engine is free. This project is free. You can grab everything. Uh, we'll take a quick detour after we do this and I'll show you where y'all can pick this stuff up. Uh, so this anchor, so the anchor is really important. So what I wanna do is actually take this and I wanna kind of set it in the middle of the screen. And if I put it in the middle of the screen, my text is actually going to show up based on where that anchor is. So if I put it down here, this is gonna kinda always anchor it to the center of the screen. Most likely, <clears throat> excuse me, most likely what you're gonna wanna do is actually put this anchor in the bottom right-hand corner, and then your team name will show up in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. So as we're playing, it will show up down here. Okay, so it's anchored here. So no matter where this is, no matter how big the screen happens to be, your name will always be down there in the bottom right-hand corner. Sneaky marketing questions heard. All right, so I'm going to come down here, and with this text block, all we need to do is change this. So let's say team, ooh, I don't know, awesome, and stuff. Cool. Now we have this team awesome and stuff. <laughs> you can see it pulled it way over there to the side. So let's actually grab this, just make that a little bit larger, just so we can kind of keep track of where that's at. Hey, morning, Isaacs. Good to see you, my friend. All right, so this right here is anchored right here in the corner. Okay, let's go ahead and compile this and we'll go ahead and save it. Okay, so now we've created our widget. Okay, now if you want more lines down here, you can just add in more text. Um, you can also, um, there are some like actual bigger text boxes that you can put in here too. So multiples or just the one or two. I'm just gonna leave this one as is. So now what we want to do is we want to get this onto our actual screen. So I moved it, so I need to compile it again. So let's go 
back over here to our third person game mode, okay? And then we need to create another widget. Now we can just take this one, so I'm just gonna copy it. And let's bring this over. And I can hit, while this one's actually selected, here's a little hotkey for y'all. So if I hit Control W while that one's selected, it'll just duplicate it. So this is our new widget. But we wanna change this class, we wanna change this to our team name, because this is the widget that we just created was our team name. Hello, Anders. Good to meet you. Good to see you. So we can do that. So this is here. So now what we need to do is we need to add it to the viewport. So we're going to take this same one and we're going to control W and add it here. So then we just need to connect all of our wires. So from our execution, from our add viewport, we'll drop that into our team name. And then we'll just take this and we'll execute across there. And our return value, we need to connect with our target like so. So now this should show up on screen as soon as the game plays. So compile, save, <gasps> moment of truth. Come up here, we'll say play. Ta-da, awesome team and stuff. There it is down there in the bottom right-hand corner. And it will always be on screen as long as we're playing, even if the player happens to die. So there it is. So you can add all kinds of things on screen. You can do uh, images, you can do icons, you can do power bars, you could do stamina bars, there's all kinds of amazing things. We're not gonna jump too far into that, but we'll definitely be doing this one. Uh, so Tree's asking, do you need to add a, a viewport nodes or can you use the one at the end of the blueprint string? Um, so uh, kind of, I don't know, let's find out. <laughs> I always just add an extra one on there or is that third person game mode? Uh, we can try yeah, you're gonna, we're gonna have to add an extra one on there. The way I'm looking at this is that we've got our, our return value. So the return value of this node needs to be added to the viewport. Uh, we might, let's try an experiment. You ready? You all ready for this? Here we go. Because one of the things we can't do is we can't double the execution pins there. But let's move this over. Let's do this. And then we're gonna take and drop this over here. And we're gonna drop this one into that one as well. Aha, we can double those up. All right, so let's delete that. Let's compile and we'll play. Survey says, sure enough, break the code, she says. <laughs> cool, so we didn't break the code, it actually worked. So yeah, good call on that one, Tree. Thank you for asking, that was an excellent one. The code had it coming. True story there. Okay, so we've got this on screen. So you can add whatever you want in there. Super cool. Um, to answer not a faces question earlier, is this stuff free and where can you get it? Yes, you can. So if you actually open up your Epic Games Launcher and you do a search, so we're inside the Unreal Engine over here. We're going to come up to the Marketplace. And if you do a search up here for Hour of Code... We'll find this. Ta-da! There it is. So it is free. You can see it's free right down there. So yeah, this is awesome. Download it. Play with it. Do cool things. Like us on, you know, put a uh, clever like us uh, at clever like on Twitter. Let us know that you guys are building stuff because it's so cool. <laughs> I love this project. I've had so much fun with it since we've made it. All right. So there's that one. Okay. So let's do some world building because this is this is my bread and butter. This is the stuff that I like like above and beyond everything that I ever do. Um, and then we'll get into flying our character around. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Because we wanna go farther than just what we were able to. So we're gonna talk about levels really quick. So this level, let's actually come up here into Windows, come down here into Levels. And if we open this up, I'm getting my little levels up here. And you'll notice that we've got level one, level two, level three, level four, level five up in here. Um, and if I turn a couple of these on, I'm gonna back my camera up because this is a really good spot to kind of see. So inside level five, you'll notice that we have this whole, oops, this whole little spot. So this is what's living inside of level five. It kind of sits with the rest of the world, which is great. Um, there are also coins that are inside of level five, okay? What we are currently seeing is all of this stuff together, kind of mashed together. You can kind of think of it as like groups. These levels are kind of like groups, um, but not really, they're a little bit different. So 
essentially what we can do is we can actually go look at each one of these. So let's just kind of back up and take a look at one of these individually. So to find these, it's actually very easy. If you select your content down here in the bottom left, and then you choose your filters. And up here, you can see I've actually got levels turned on. If you've got this one turned on, okay, you can come down here and it'll probably do it automatically. And it'll turn this on. You're like, oh, here, look at this. We got all these levels down here. So here's level one and two, three, four, five. That's these right here. That's exactly what those are. This persistent level is the level that we're actually inside of. And that name is actually right down here. So this little one right here, that is this one. So we're inside this level with all these other ones kind of loaded in on top of it or along with it rather is probably a better way to put that. So if we load in like say level five, let's just double click this. It's gonna say, hey, we've changed a couple of things. Do you wanna save it? I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, let's save all that stuff. And you'll see that we have this and you're like, well, what is going on? It's super dark. So let's go over to lit and say unlit. So now we can see everything. And if I select this and press F on the keyboard and zoom over to it, you can see that this is that little island that's floating way over there. This over here, it's like that, hit F, we'll zoom in on it. This is that little corner spot right there. Now, the reason that this is so dark is because the Unreal Engine actually is a physically based engine. So there's no light inside of this level. So we can't see anything unless we set this to unlit. So that's why it looks so dark. So these are just little groups is really all they are. And it looks like I've got a floater in here too. Look at that, I wonder where that came from. Hmm. Needs to be cleaned up, goodbye. We'll hit delete, get rid of that one. So let's make our own level. Let's actually just build our own kind of world. So what I wanna do is I wanna kind of keep everything organized. So let's turn off my filter. And then down here, I'm gonna go ahead and right click and I'm gonna create a new folder. And this is gonna be all of my pieces. So I'm just going to select that. And we're gonna name this one, uh, let's call this one Gatlin's, Gatlin stuff, Gatlin assets. These are Gatlin's assets. And inside of here, I'm gonna create a new level. So I can just right click and choose level. For open world games, ooh, Evolution Games, good question. Um, would it be possible to get one of the future streams to cover a world composition building for big open games? Uh, manually sculpting is too tedious. <laughs> um, that's a good question. Uh, I've not actually done too much of that evolution. So the answer is yes, I'll, I'll dig into it and see what I can actually find. Um, I know enough to be dangerous, but I don't know how performant it would be. And that's that's my main concern. And I, I would hate to give you wrong information. And that's my biggest concern with that. Uh, but yes, I would, I would dig into that um, for sure, for sure. I can't guarantee when it'll happen. Probably I've got something planned for next week. So maybe the week after or two from now, uh, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, good question. I like that one. Okay, so back to the level. So with this one, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name. So we're gonna say level, because I like the naming conventions. And we're gonna call this one, um, what should we call this? This should be level of awesome. Should we do just an awesome level? Uh, let's do platformer. R-M-E-R, -E platformer. Cool. So you'll notice there's a little asterisk on it. That means it hasn't been saved a bit, but that's okay. Cause if I double click on it, it'll ask me if I want to save it. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, yes, let's save both of these. So now we have this completely, totally dark world, even though it says unlit and you're like, where is everything? So let's actually light this up. And we're gonna light this up by adding in a level that Liquid Development actually created. Um, that's where all this content came from. So Liquid Development was the uh, studio that actually came up with this stuff. Thank you, huge shout out to them. The amazing amount of work that they've done. Um, and we're gonna dig into some of the cool stuff that they've got. So this is totally and completely blank and empty. Now we could start from scratch and actually drop in the lights and actual uh, all the bits and pieces that we need for this and the atmosphere. We're actually gonna skip that and we're gonna use what they had built. So if we go to content again, let's turn on our level filter. And what we're looking for is this teacher marketplace lighting zero one. So we're just gonna take this. And we've got our levels up here open. We're just gonna drag this up here and then let go. And then this adds it in. You're like, ooh, this is really cool. So let's take this from unlit to lit. Ta-da, we have everything that we had inside that other world. So what's cool is that this level actually has a couple of little floater islands. It's got a couple of the actual clouds in here. Um, you'll notice we've got a couple of little pieces that kind of live down here in the center. Um, these are a uh, post-processing volume right here, uh, which help with the lighting as well as just kind of making things look nice and pretty. Um, and then we also have the lights in here as well. And if we go up to the world outliner, come up here 
and let's do a light GHT. You can see that we have directional lights, point lights, skylights, a couple of other directional lights. We've got visual effects lights that are in here. Uh, these are actual um, particle effects, these VFX rays. Um, and if you're really lucky, they're kind of hard to find. There's one. They're these big, giant things. And it's just a giant visual effect. So they're not really lighting anything up, but they've got the word light in them, so they show up in the filters up here. Okay, so now we have a world with some light in it. So if we come back to our levels, we can turn this on and off. And don't forget that if I try and play this, this isn't going to show up because you can see right up here, this has a little tiny blue dot next to it where it says Teacher Marketplace. So that tells me it's only being loaded in by Blueprint. I don't want to load it in as Blueprint. I want to actually come down here and change this streaming method to always loaded. That way it'll always be in there. Okay, from here, let's start adding and like building our actual world. So we're going to need somewhere to start. That's going to be a big help. So if we go over to our content over here and we turn off our levels, but turn on our static mesh, we get a huge list of static mesh pieces. And all of this stuff we can add into our world. You can even see that we've even got the, uh, the character in here before the textures have been added to it. So this is really nice to have, which is really, 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 really cool to have toys. I love all this stuff. Okay. You can actually kind of narrow this down a little bit more if you go into the actual teacher marketplace. And then these are more or less just the simple pieces that we're going to need, which is going to be really fun to play with. So let's grab one of these giant islands. So this SM floating island L. So this is a large one. I'm just going to drag this into the world. You can see this sucker's huge. It's a monster. So now we have a place to begin. Um, I'm also going to come over here to my location and I'm going to hit this little tiny yellow arrow. This is going to send it back to the 000 point in the world, the world origin. And now I kind of have an idea of where the world begins. So if I were to come up here and inside of my play, and I say play from current camera location, I'm going to fall and goodbye. I'm never going to make it to where I need it to be. So let's put in a player start so we know the player is going to be able to begin somewhere. Over here on the far left, uh, we can just search for player start. Actually, it's right there under basic. So that's nice too. So I can just drag that, put that right there. I can hit F on the keyboard and zoom in to it. So there's that. So now, and if I set this to default player start as it was, and I hit play, boom, now I'm inside my world. You'll notice that those post-processing volumes and those lights have kind of disappeared. You can't do anything with them. They are not going to show up in game. And you'll also notice that our Team Awesome and stuff is still there in the bottom right hand corner. So that's handy, right? Uh, let's actually disconnect that. We don't need that in there. So we can do that real easy. We'll just take this execution pin, and bring it over here, and we'll compile that. Oh, what did that? What was that? Did you guys see that? Compile. Ah, this just doesn't have anything on it. So this is just a warning. Um, it's connected currently right now. So that's why it's trying to actually do something. So I'm just going to hold Alt and disconnect that for the moment. Uh, Tree is asking, do you need the post-processing volume to cover the entire world? The answer is no, you do not. So let's select this post-processing volume. And there is, let's go over here. And inside of the details, I'm going to click on this little eyeball. And I'm going to just say collapse all categories. And in here, oh, I can never remember where it's at. So let's just do this. So we type in the word infinite. And you will find post-processing volume settings, there's this infinite, let's zoom in on this one. So you'll see that there's this infinite extend unbound. So by turning this on, it will act as though it's covering the entire world. So you don't have to extend it to the entire world. Yeah, you're very welcome. Mm, okay, so the question is, what should we build inside of this world? So when Clever and I, Clever Like and I were actually kind of discussing how to build this world, we're like, well, we need to like have this and we have these learning objectives and we want to make all these things happen because you know we're teachers and that's kind of what we want to do, right? So <laughs> funny enough, uh, months later, I still have that document. This is this is literally how that world started. Like this is a blast from the past. So lesson one, we're going to start here. We're going to jump across a few things, right? And then we're going to jump across all these little things and catch a key and then we'll move on, right? So this was a lot of fun to just kind of build and play with. This is literally how our world started. Just sketches two-dimensional and make it happen. Build a potato man. I don't know that I've got all the pieces for potato man. 
I'm, I'm thinking more of a world. Something, something we could build a, to get up to a potato man. Oh, you know what? You know what we could do. We'll 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 save this for later. Uh, but we can jump into ZBrush and actually create a potato man, and then bring it into uh, the world. And we can do it from there. Maybe we'll make it look like he's made of stone or something. I don't have any potato textures, but that would be fun. Potato parkour herd. <laughs> that would be fun. Um, so let's kind of take this lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, and let's take it out of the equation and then just kind of build a world based on the same kind of parkour because this world is really kind of built for it. So let's start with a little start area. So on this giant world, let's actually start building some kind of little environment. So down here at the bottom, we have a whole host of the tools that we can use. So we've got stairs, we've got doors up here, we've got just plain walls. So what I want to do is just start to kind of build this up with some walls. So let's just drag a wall in here. Now, something I want to point out that's really, 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 really important, especially when you're doing any kind of modular building, um, prior to actually getting these pieces inside the world is to make sure that these are all of a common size. Um, if you've ever played Fortnite, I don't know, maybe some of you all have heard of Fortnite. Some of you heard about this or seven days to die or arc. Some of these ones, right? Each of these modular pieces, they are a very specific size so that when we drag them into the world, they'll snap together really easily, which makes world building really, really helpful. So let's back up a minute and take a look at underneath the hood of what's actually going on. So I'm just going to double click on this wait for it here we go so this pops up and let's see if i can get the camera or the background rather in a good spot so you guys can see this and i'll zoom in on it so up here in the top left hand corner you can see we have this approximate size and you can see that it is 400 by 54 not really relevant by 400 so that 400 is really really important because while we're working inside of unreal so let's back up out of this into our world up here inside of the little grid snap okay so if i set this to 100 our pieces are going to snap together because they are the size 400 which is awesome it saves so much time now the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to take my rotation here and i'm going to set this one to 45 this is just a preference for me all right so now you'll notice as i drag this it'll snap which is super super cool so if i hold down the alt key and click and drag Boom, it'll snap together. Boom, it'll snap together. And I can actually grab multiples of these. So I'm just holding shift and clicking on to get multiples, holding alt, and I'll just drag and copy a few more. So now we can build up this world really quickly. So let's just grab all of these and we'll make another copy. And I'll go ahead and rotate this here. And I'm going to grab this part of my gizmo here. So we can kind of build a little setup here. So let's grab that one. And that one, we'll make a copy of those, rotate those around, set that in there. All right, so let's have our character start on top of this. Okay, so we're going to go down across something and then kind of jump around and we'll add in some sequence spots. And yeah, we're going to have some fun with this. But I need a floor. So let's look for the floor down here. I can just quick search for floor. And there's the floor. So I'm going to drag that in and just let go. And then we can bring it up and it should snap into place. Let's hit F on the keyboard so you can see where we're going. Ah, notice this isn't quite snapping. Why isn't this snapping? Why would it do this to us? Why would you do this? Why would you do this? Well, the answer is if we select one of these guys and let's clear our filter here and we look at its location. You'll notice that the location is a decimal point. And this one's also kind of a decimal point, but that one's nice and even. So that's what's kind of causing the issue. So this one is nice and even on there. So this one ended up being in the right spot. So it wasn't that big of a deal. So we need to kind of get all these other ones to kind of snap to those locations. So let's grab all of these and we're going to kind of fiddle with this. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. And then... And it's always best to kind of do this now because <laughs> you get further into the project and it's a mess. Grab all of those and let's try a little experiment. Let's hit this little thing right here and see where they go. And they all went back to world origin. <laughs> I was hoping they were going to stay together as a group. They did not. All right, so let's undo that. Instead, let's set this and the reason that they're they're off actually is because i didn't have that grid snap to begin with so i'm not even going to fight it i'm just going to start over i'll tell you right now 
if you just start over, it will save you so much time. Don't even don't even fight it. Oops. Oh, there we go. And we'll bring that in. Let's look at the actual translations on this. And they're still going to give us a hard time. All right, we'll just send it back to World Origin. Oh, haha, because I didn't have my grid snap on. See, I just told you to do a thing and then I did it wrong. There we go. Now they're nice and even. So 1600, 400. There we go. Thinking ahead is a plus. All right. So, real quickly, rebuild this. Boom. So, you can see how fast this becomes once you kind of get all your pieces. So, starting over is never that big of a deal. Yep. those rotate these around so perfect all right let's give ourselves a little bit more room to work here what's kind of fun about these floor pieces is that if you flip them over they've actually got wood on the other side so you can kind of build the aesthetic of your world depending on which side that you're actually working with, which is really, really cool. So let's set this one here, set this one here, set that one there. Let's make copies of these. Let's actually do a couple of floors. Let's give the player something to kind of work with here. So let's go down a little bit, put these over here. Okay, so there's that. And then we do have stairs. So we have a thick set and we have a thin set, which is really nice. So we can rotate this and we don't have to be like perfect, perfect. Now, having these be able to snap to each other is nice, but it isn't always necessary. It's, it's handy, but it's not necessary. So we can kind of break the rules a little bit after we kind of get some of this stuff set up. So if I get this about here and then we turn our snapping back on, we can actually start to fill all this stuff in. Should we put a build? Should we build a basement? This, this is the interactive part. Should we build a basement? <laughs> Bueller, Bueller, anybody? Let's turn that and bring this down just a little bit. A dungeon. Ooh. I wonder if we have any dungeon pieces. I'm really tempted to uh, go pull some stuff from the marketplace and see what can find stuff. Cool. So there we go. So now we've got a place. Ooh, let's have our player start. So this little arrow, the reason I'm rotating this is this is the direction that the player will be facing when they actually begin the game. All right. So let's just kind of get ourselves back over here. All right. So if I say play, Ta-da, here we go. So our player has got to make a jump to get out of here, it looks like. Oop, there we go. We go up here, we come up here. We have this beautiful world. So here's something to kind of think about when you're building a world. It's like, okay, what can the player see? What is going to entice them to go do something? You know, What are we teaching them to do so that they explore the world even farther? What kind of game mechanics do they need to learn as they're going through this to actually get to where they need to get to? always telling a story kind of through gameplay so from here i guess kind of start down here like this is fun right this is kind of cool but where can we go to so i'm going to block out the world a little bit at a time and i don't know if i've got enough pieces for a dungeon let's see what we have in here um we have gates we have a lever that's kind of fun uh we have some blocks so we can kind of put these in here I can actually turn the scale off, the snap scale for that. I don't need that one. So we can set this in here like so. Oh, and let's let's teach the player something while they're down here. Trapdoor to death. We could, uh, hmm, I'm planning on world building that game mechanics just yet. <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's kind of think about that. So we got dungeons and death. Uh, actually, I don't think it would be too hard to actually do that. Let's do this. Okay, so this ball, the reason that I want to put this ball here 
is if, if you can get the player to play with something, like they're instantly engaged at playing, right? So this ball in here, I'm going to set this so that you can actually move it around in the world. So with it selected inside of our world, inside of the details panel, um, all I need to do is just close these down until I find the physics one. Yay, and we're going to say simulate physics. So now when we play, if I walk up to it, I can actually push this thing around. Now we have a little ball that we can play with. And as soon as I leave the game, it will just kind of be right here. Um, you can, of course, change the size on this. Uh, by default, the uh, physics over here, this mass and kilograms, this will, if you don't have it checked, the size of this, the volume of this will control the actual mass. So right now, if I continue to make this larger, you'll see that that mass continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But I can make it pretty good sized, and then I can just control this. So if I toggle this so that I can control it, 100 kilograms, perfect. And it'll make it pretty light. And then I can rock into it, cool. And I can still move it around. We can set this even lower. So let's set this at like 50. That's quite a change. <laughs> there we go, yeah, that's a lot lighter. I can just kind of move it around. Oh, fun things to play with immediately. Okay, so let's, should we trap the player? Let's see if we can trap the player. What time is it? 36 after, perfect, we have time. Okay, hmm, where should we trap the player? Should we have him drop off over here? Let's have him drop off over here. So let's give them something to walk by. A little bit of to work here let's grab one of these i'm going to hold alt and we'll drag this over here and then we need to build a little bit of a room yeah let's build up a room let's make sure we got our snapping on that's important let's delete that one because it was not snapped like so move this over and then we'll make a copy of it and then we'll make copy of that one and then we'll bring this one down and we'll bring this one down so we're going to trap them inside this tiny little wall or tiny little room so they can't get out and then we'll kill them when they land ha 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 okay so we want to see what's going on in there so let's do that there we go so we want to drop them down inside of here so to do that yeah let's do this so we'll go up here into this um in the place actors Inside of our volumes, what I'm looking for is a pain causing volume. So we'll call pain. We can just drag our pain causing volume and drop it into here. So let's test to make sure this is going to work first. We'll right click right in this area and I'm just going to say play from here. That player will start from there. So if I touch that, -da, and then I just respawn. So I've died. It's pretty much. So we know that that mechanic is working. There's part number one. Okay, part number two. Yeah, this we should have enough time to do this. <laughs> this is going to be silly. All right, so in the previous lessons, we talked about blueprints and getting them to actually work. So my thought is we'll take this, and as soon as the player gets over or on top of it, right on top of it, we'll shrink it down to like nothing so that it's not there anymore. And that'll basically just drop out from underneath it. We could also like turn it so that it drops um, we'll kind of play this play this by ear and see how this works. Um, I think the I think the drop animation will be a little bit more fun. So let's create an actual blueprint. So let's go back up into our Gatlin assets up here. Um, I just realized I've done something horrible and I'm putting all these new pieces in this teacher levels. <laughs> so let's let's fix that. Um, if I yeah, because if I turn that off, yeah, they all go away. We need to actually be putting this stuff in the persistent level. <laughs> so I'm gonna hold down Control and Alt. And click and drag and I can select multiple things inside the viewport. So this is just control and alt and left mouse clicking. And I'm going to unselect this and I'm going to unselect that and I'm going to unselect the thing underneath there. And I've actually got one of the particles selected and some of these pieces selected. So let's control and just unselect that one and that one and that one. That's really hard to get at. That one. And the particles, where are the particles at? I think it's that one right there. Okay, and then this ground. So then I'm gonna right click on my persistent level now that I have all the pieces that I want selected and putting in there. And we're just going to say, move selected actors to level. Oh, I need to double click on that so that it's bold. There we go. 
There we got it. So now when I turn that off, perfect. Now just the lighting is in there. Oh, no, oh, the particles are in there too. That's fine. It'll be okay. All right. So let's start here and let's get an idea of what the player can actually see. So as they're coming up to this, okay, too bad. I think that that's a pretty clean shot as they're coming up the up here. Um, let's tempt them. <laughs> Should be nicer to your players than this. This is a horrible thing to do. But let's tempt them. If we go into the hour of code, we go into our blueprints. Let's turn off our static mesh filter and grab a coin. We'll put a coin right there. This is the coin of death. All right, so now let's actually build the blueprint. Back this up. So inside of our Gatlin assets over here, I'm just gonna right click and create a new folder because I wanna keep things organized. I'm gonna call this some blueprints. And then we'll double click to open that one up. And inside of here, we're gonna go ahead and right click and choose blueprint class. We're gonna choose the actor class, this first one up here. Cool, so we'll call this one BP, we'll call it trapdoor. This made, we can just double click on it. This will open up the blueprint editor. So instead of here, we're gonna start adding pieces. I'm also going to kind of pull this down to the side. Let's get rid of that, don't need one of those. That's not necessary and that will worry about later. So in here, I want to actually have one of these floor pieces. So I don't need it inside the world. So this floor piece that is here in the world, I'm just gonna delete it and get rid of it. Okay, what I am going to do is over here in this little blueprints, let's go ahead and say add component and I'm gonna type in static mesh. Down here to static mesh, bottom of this list. It might be a little hard to see on screen, so let's do that, there we go. So it's this one right here, okay. We'll call this SM, we'll call this uh, trapdoor. Back up, oh, they're gonna let me do it, here we go. So this is a static mesh like node. There's nothing inside of it yet. So we need to actually add that piece to it. So to make that happen, we need to make sure this, this is selected. And over here, let's make this a little bit larger so you all can see this. Give ourselves a little bit more room to work. So with our trap door selected, I'm going to look over here. Instead of static mesh, you'll see that I have a node or an area, a slot, to actually put this static mesh into. So I'll just click on none, and we're gonna look for floor. We have our floor kit, and our template floor, and our 400 by 400 floor. So I'm pretty sure it's the kit floor. Hey, there it is, perfect, cool. Now this one is not upside down, and we wanna make sure that that's upside down. Now this is the reason that I'd actually dragged this off to the side a little bit, is now I can take this and I can drag it into the world and let's rotate it and set it into place. And I'm keeping in mind that my pivot point for my blueprint is up here in the corner. So that's where this one is right here, okay? So I wanna kinda keep that in mind as I'm working. And it looks like, and let's actually do this. So I'm gonna change this from um, this little button right here. It's very small on screen, but this one right here. So this will change it from global to local. So I can kind of see the direction that the blueprint is facing as opposed to how it's sitting in the world. So it's local orientation. So now that it's set to local with a little cube on there, I can see that this green arrow is heading this way. So this green arrow is heading this way. So this is the Y direction on there. And the other one, let's select that hit F and zoom in on it, make life a little easier on us. Let's get ourselves a little bit more room to work. So if I've got it set this way, I need to rotate it around the X axis so that it'll drop down, right? But remember, I want that floor turned over because I want it to look like wood. So over here in my blueprint is where I'm gonna be doing my actual orientation. So if I select this, grab my rotation, and let's just flip this over, okay? And now you'll notice, see what it did inside of our world? So let's go ahead and rotate this this way. And if I look back at its axis, now I can see I need to rotate it along the Y axis, the Y direction. So this is why, ha ha ha, that it's important to do that, okay? To pay attention to its local space. All right, so let's actually get this thing to like drop down out from underneath the player. So to do that, we need to set up a couple of things. We need to notify it that the player has actually walked into there. And then after it's been notified that it's in the player is there, then we need to actually rotate the object. 
Ooh, this, we're going to be cutting it close on this one. So let's start writing some code. So I'm going to go over here to the event graph. So this little tab up here and all of this stuff is pretty much garbage for us. We don't need it. You can either leave it in there or delete it. I'm going to just clean it up and get rid of it. So I'll select all those and delete it with the trap door. Okay. So we have our one object up in here. So what I want to do is I want to rotate this object. Um, first, we want to notify the blueprint that somebody's there. So we need to add in something else. So inside of our blueport, our viewport, um, I'm going to say, let's make sure I've got my default scene root selected in our components. And we're going to grab a collision. Let's grab a box, just a simple box collision. So there's our box. Now, again, let's check out our world. Think about this logically. Let's grab our little box here and I'm just going to move this and I'm paying attention to where it is inside of the actual blueprint for right now. Let's actually turn my snapping off because that won't be necessary as well as my scale snapping, but that's cool. Perfect. So we can make this a little bit larger. So as soon as the player touches this, the box is going to actually drop out from underneath them. So where do we put the coin to tempt the player further back so they can't get it or they should just get it and then it'll drop out from underneath them. Let's just leave it there for now. We'll, we'll troubleshoot some more of that here in a minute. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and name this box collision something handy. So we'll call this box CLL. So we know that this is the collision. Let's go back into our event graph with our box selected. There's a couple of ways that we can actually create the collision. Uh, in the activities, we were actually using these little buttons down here, but you can also, with this selected, you can right click and we're gonna say add event on box collision and we'll go into collision. And what I'm looking for is this on begin component overlap. So click that and we get this big giant fat node. Yay, buddy. So when we overlap this, we want to rotate this floor out from underneath the player. So we can, let's see here. We're gonna need, let's pull a pin off of here. Let's see if we can do it this way. So we'll say rotate, um, we wanna say set local rotation. Oh, is that not going to give it? Add local. Oh, I know why it's not giving it to us. Um, because we're actually pulling out the execution. So let's actually grab one of these over here. And we'll say set local. Set. Of course, you're going to give me offset and not rotation. the add local rotation. There we go. Not set, but add. All right. And if we drop this in here, we have our trap door. So what is our change? So our delta rotation. So we've got an X, Y, and a Z value. So if we come back over here, select this, let's look at it in the world. Do you remember which direction we need to go with this? We need to go down the Y. So we need this to drop out from underneath. So this needs to do this. That is our Y value. So if we come back into here, we've got X, Y, and Z. So let's set this at 90. Ooh, here's a question. Now, is it positive or is it negative? So let's look at our rotations up here. And our rotation, okay, so our current rotation is 50, sorry, 54, zero, and then 72. And if I drop this, it goes down to negative 40 and then negative 90. Okay, so that means this needs to be negative 90. Double check, triple check, see if you can figure it out, compile it. All right, so something I've not added in here is a timeline due to time, because I've only got 10 minutes. We'll see if we can get this in here. So if we play this, let's see if this works. Oh, haha, should have played it up above. That's fine, we'll go up, up here. So if I touch that, boom, and it goes straight up. <laughs> Oh yeah, remember? We turned this thing upside down. So we need to go into our trap door and let's set this one to actually positive 90. I forgot that it was turned upside down. Doing local. Let's try this again. And then we'll say, play from here. Boom, da-da, and then the player falls in. And then they die, and then they just have to start over. So, and it stays open, by the way, because the game is still running. So what we're doing here is we're just snapping it to that point, we don't actually have an animation. 
Uh, we got 10 minutes left. Let's add in that animation. So let's move this over. And we can kind of look at the code that we've already built for some of these other objects to make this work. So if we go look at our hour of code, let's go into our blueprints. This, this is one of the nice things about this project is you can kind of go backwards and kind of look at the way some of these other pieces are built, right? So let's look at the door lever. So if we open the door lever, and if we look inside of here, we have this lever right here, and this is being driven by a blueprint too. You can see there's a little box right here. So this little guy, this is known as the SM handle. So we go in the event graph, and we do a search for handle. We find that we have a handle rotate value right here, and then we've got our actual object. So we double click this, there it is. So we have this set relative rotation. See, I thought there was a set in there. So we've got add local rotation. Now that's really interesting. All right, so what's happening is that this animation, let's get these out of the way, that's kind of weird. Or don't, there we go. What we'd have here is an animation that is setting the handles relative rotation. Okay, so we just need to add one of these animation timeline nodes inside of here. So let's go back to our trap door and drag a wire off of here. We'll say timeline. At the very bottom of the list, you can see it says add timeline. So we'll say add timeline there. And we're going to call this one uh, trap rotation. There we go. And we're going to get rid of this add local rotation. And we're going to do this set relative rotation. There we go. That's what I was looking for earlier. So set relative rotation. Perfect. So let's go ahead and connect our updates. And we're going to move this one up a little bit. So inside of our rotation here, let's spell that correctly. Holy moly. A-T. <laughs> It was spelled mm, dyslexia. Love it. All right. So this, we need to open this one up. So I'm just going to double click on it and we'll get this blank slate. Uh, to add this actual animation is a nice curve. We're going to come up here to the float button. So this little guy right here, this little float, we'll say add float. And we're going to call this one door. Uh, we'll call this door drop is dropping out from underneath the player. So now we have a timeline in here. So I'm going to hold down the um, shift key and left mouse click, and I'm going to create two points. So this point right here, we have a time. Let's zoom in on this. So we have a time and we have a value. So at time zero, we're going to set the value of our rotation at zero. There we go. Okay. And then this one, we're going to set, how long do we want it to take for this to drop out from underneath the player? We'll say 0.25, so it'll be pretty short. And then the value, we're going to go ahead and say, mm, let's say 90, because we're going to do 90. And you'll notice it disappears off screen. I can hit the F key, uh, maybe. There we go. We hit the F key, and now we can actually see this. So we have this nice linear change from at time zero, it's got no rotation. At time 0.25, it's got a rotation of 90, or a value of 90 is a way to kind of think about this. Um, I'm also going to make sure that I click this little button right here. This is the use last keyframe. That way, I do have more actual keyframes in here, and you can see that. I've got one second, two second, three second, four second, five seconds worth of information, but I'm only using this much. So I'm just going to use that last keyframe as the end of my animation. Or I could very easily just set this to 0.25. Either way, now they're kind of redundant, so we'll turn that off. Compile that little part. Let's go back over here, and now you see we have a new pin. This was not here before. Rewind the video. You'll see that it's not there, and we need to set this into our rotation. But wait, 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 wait. We don't want to just attach it because it'll rotate X, Y, and Z. We don't want to do X, Y, and Z. We just want to do that one direction. So this pin, this rotation pin, has actually got three pieces in it, and we're going to split that structure. So I can right click on this and I will say split struct pin. Open that one up. All right, so let's take our door drop and we wanna attach this to the Y. Cause I said so, that's why. <laughs> All right, so when we overlap, we'll be running this animation, which will then change the value of the rotation on our object. So let's compile this. Let's go back into here. Let's see how this works. We'll say play from here. Give it a test. So when I walk into it, 
Badoof, and it totally moved. And you can see, oh, and I died. You can see this is where it ended up. So the question then is, well, what did we do wrong? Well, technically we didn't do anything wrong. We're just not thinking about the way this thing was working to begin with. So we need to kind of come back into here and take a look at all of its, whoops, not that one, this one. We need to kind of come in here and be like, okay, well, what is, what is its current rotation? Well, it's 180, it's zero and 360. So let's actually make this a nice even. Three hundred and sixty. So if we're changing this, let's look at the code. So what we're doing is we're setting the relative rotation. So we're setting it to be zero, ninety, zero. Well, one eighty, zero, and three sixty. That doesn't really help us. <clears throat> we need to set this to one eighty. So that matches this one. And then the Y, so this is zero, so this will become 90. And then the last one, we'll set this to 360 or zero in this case. Okay. Event graph back, we'll compile that. Now let's test it and see what happens. Did we, did we think about this correctly? So we can right click, say play from here. And if I touch it, and it goes up. Okay, cool, but it didn't slide off to the side. So now we know we need to set this to negative. So inside of here, inside of this animation, we'll open this up. And instead of this value right here being 90, we need to set this to be negative 90. Now that, let's go back into here, play. All right, so now when we walk onto it, uh, it drops out from underneath the player like we would expect. So now that we've built this, Oh, and we got three minutes. <laughs> this is like the best part ever. Okay, we're gonna take this and we're going to clone it. Okay, let's turn on our snap. We're gonna bring it over here. <laughs> this is why I love game design. This is about to get super, super silly. Um, with this one, I'm gonna flip it upside down and I'm gonna rotate it around and I'm gonna make it really big. And I'm gonna pull it over here. I'm sure you can see where this is going. If you can't see where this is going, then you're not having fun in life. All right, so I'm going to right-click, play from here, All right? So that one drops out from me, right? So if I touch this one, uh... <laughs> trap doors, trap doors, and we didn't do anything but just change the size on this. So we can actually, let's actually do this a little bit differently. I was expecting something different. So let's back this back up. Oh, let's just set that to where is our scale set that back down to one for all this section needs to go this way then we go this way so we'll play from here all right goodbye cruel world here we go whoa i'm never gonna end i'm just gonna keep going i don't think i'll actually die because i don't think there's a kill plane in here and i'm just gonna keep going forever <laughs> Well, that was fun. Good times. All right, I'm going to hit F on the keyboard to zoom back over there. So there you have it. You can start to kind of build worlds. So my plan for this kind of series is we're going to continue to kind of just build some fun things and build an entire world so we can get from one place to the next. Um, I want to be able to use all the game mechanics that we have in here, and we can kind of explore the pieces that we have to kind of build whatever kind of world we want. Um, so I don't know that we'll build a dungeon, but I got a feeling we're going to build kind of a, a player launcher kind of thing because it's more fun that way. It's just, that's just my opinion. Um, I would like to build some teleports in here. Um, I would really do want to actually get some pieces, uh, some things, some floating islands from one place to another. I think that would be a lot of fun to kind of work with as well. Um, I don't have any problems actually making a potato. Uh, we can drop into ZBrush and start to kind of play with some of the stuff that's in there. I think that would be kind of fun. Um, as far as the world building thing, um, I, like I said, I do need to do a little research on that and see if I can actually kind of put that together and make that work as well. So uh, I want to say thank you, everybody that stuck around for this whole thing. This is a really fun little stream. But there are a lot of little toys to play with inside of here. So I got a feeling we're going to have a whole lot of fun. And if you have any requests, uh, you know, at Cleverlike on Twitter, let us know what's actually going on inside of there and we'll continue from there. But until then, I hope to see you all again sometime. And yeah, we'll keep making some more awesome. So thank you again so much for joining.